Right, deep breath. <gasps> Firstly, are you OK? I've got a bit of a bunged up nose, otherwise I'm fine. <laughs> Welcome to Have I Got News For You. I'm Harry Hill. In the news this week, in Shropshire, one man is not entirely happy with his wife's trip to this year's Chelsea Flower Show. <laughs> <laughs> After police discover a huge haul of Class A drugs at a house in central London, one government minister clears his diary and offers to personally inspect the crime scene. <laughs> And in Richmond, driving past someone who's broken down, Rishi Sunak spots an opportunity to help a constituent in need. <laughs> <laughs> On Ian's team tonight is a presenter and editor-in-chief of digital broadcaster Vice, who says it's the youngest group of people she's ever worked with. But that was before tonight. <laughs> Please welcome Zing Sing. On Paul's team tonight is a comedian who once thought about becoming a priest but decided against it. I don't blame him. Who wants to spend their entire career wearing a silly collar? <laughs> <laughs> Please welcome Jack D. <laughs> yes. Jack D. We begin with the bigger news stories of the week. Ian and Zing, take a look at this. Here's Rishi Sunak celebrating Pride by deporting some gay migrants. <laughs> <laughs> Here he is deporting them by air, just to make sure. <laughs> oh, and who's the bloke on the right? <laughs> <laughs> this is our Prime Minister. He's had an incredibly busy week. He's been in boats, planes... Meeting chickens. Meeting... I think it's an eagle. Ah, OK. My I mistake. hate that. Yeah, no, no. Sorry to the Americans. Actually, I think it's a man in a costume. <laughs> <laughs> What, the bloke on the right in costume? Yes. <laughs> so let's start with that trip. Why was he there? I think he went to America to get his photograph taken with an eagle. Yes. OK. <laughs> and also to meet Joe Biden. Joe Biden has got to fit him in, and it's, he's got an incredibly tight schedule. You have to go before the afternoon nap and <laughs> the mid-afternoon nap, and then the evening, it's all gone. <laughs> And you would think he'd pronounced Rishi Sunak's name right, because the first time around he said it was Rashid Sunuk. Yeah, but this time he called him Richie, which is nearer. <laughs> Donald Trump, when he was reading the auto cue and it came to the word Yosemite, said Yo Semites. <laughs> <laughs> which is as John Berman, a news anchor on CNN who himself is Jewish, said that's how Jewish people greet each other. <laughs> Eagle is the baseball mascot of the team that, you know, ceremonially people get invited to throw the first pitch at a baseball match if you're a visiting president or prime minister. Unfortunately, Rishi Sunak literally chickened out. <laughs> what, he, he couldn't even throw a ball? No, he couldn't. <laughs> well, it's all over, isn't it? <laughs> he declined the invitation to throw the ceremonial first pitch at baseball. According to The Guardian, this is because Conservative MPs were keen for the Prime Minister to appear broadly competent. <laughs> 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 President Biden was on typically great form. He is a walking yeah. metaphor, isn't he? Oh. <laughs> Just let the poor man rest. Yes. He just needs a good rest. <laughs> what, in peace? <laughs> he blamed the sandbag, didn't he? He did, yeah. Well, I think I blamed the sandbag as well. It was right there next to him. He didn't know what was going on. He's got all these bodyguards talking to him. Oh, yeah, they're looking out for snipers. Mm. But he's got no-one there looking out for, like, trip hazards. <laughs> yeah. At that point, that's what you need. 
Yeah. You're not scared about being shot at that age. You're <laughs> just scared about falling over. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. And it'd be difficult to shoot anyway, cos he keeps falling over, so you'd... You know... <laughs> And Mrs. Biden uh, is looking forward to receiving the 250 quid from You've Been Framed. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, You've Been Framed. 15 years of free money, as I call it. Now, um, <laughs> here's Rishi on a plane heading to the US on Tuesday. <laughs> it's like a reboot of Succession with all the attractive people taken out. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're watching this morning. <laughs> If you look carefully, you can just see BBC's Chris Mason there at the yes. back. Can you spot mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we play, no offence to Chris, a sort of Where's Wally game? Yes. 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 Do that. Yeah. About, yeah. Yes. I'll show you some pictures of Rishi surrounded by journalists, and you see if you can spot Chris Mason. OK. <laughs> Here's an easy one to start with. Ready? Where's Chris Mason? Can you see... <laughs> He is next to the current Prime Minister, looking very worried. There he is, yeah. Yep. Why is he looking so sad? He's on a plane with Rishi Sunak. <laughs> <laughs> Look how big that mug is in his hand. He must be so tiny. <laughs> He's tiny. Yeah. Yeah. He can hardly lift it. <laughs> OK, next one, please. Where's Chris Mason? Where's Chris? <laughs> um, I think he's right at the back. Yes, oh, I like this game. It's good, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's a good game, isn't it? Yeah. Ready for the next one? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Where's Chris? Where's Chris Mason? <laughs> 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 this could be a trick question. I suppose it is him in the blue jacket. It but is Chris Mason. It is Chris yeah. Mason, yes. Yeah. <laughs> You're watching BBC One. <laughs> um, but not for much longer. <laughs> not for much longer. <laughs> Before he went to the States, Rishi went on a day trip to Dover. What did he take the opportunity to do there? He took a tour of the White Cliffs and he visited the Vera Lynn Monument and he sang We'll Meet Again <laughs> to a group of immigrants who are coming back again. <laughs> he turned up in his big pair of boots, didn't he? <laughs> yes. Shouldn't that not say stop the boots? <laughs> <laughs> No real explanation why he's wearing them. He's like, oh, these things, yeah, just that's the way I roll these days. <laughs> Aren't they very special boots, though? I think they're from Timberland. They're they Timberland, are, yeah. yeah. This is actually what kids nowadays call drip. What does it mean, drip, in this context? It means that he's got style. Oh. Right. He'll get a free pair of Timberlands at some point, I'm sure. Yeah. Which he needs, because he's quite short of money. Mm. <laughs> well, to be fair, they are very good boots. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They'd suit a Mercedes sports car, wouldn't they? <laughs> did everyone agree with Rishi about the improvement in the migrant figures? They no. didn't. Not everybody agreed? No. <laughs> uh, apparently some of the opposition leaders inside the Cabinet. <laughs> <laughs> Others claimed the downturn in numbers was down to the bad weather. Nigel Farage declared on Twitter, Stop the boats is not working, it's just windy. <laughs> The Prime Minister was keen to talk about stopping the boats, but what proved a destroy... Oh, we've done that. It's the boots, isn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah we've everybody. done all that. This is a repeat on BBC One. Yeah. <laughs> People complain about repeats on BBC One, but mm. not normally within the same programme. Within the same <laughs> programme. <laughs> Finally, Number 10 put out a video showcasing all that the Prime Minister achieved in the month of May. Here's an extract. What a month it's been, kicking off with the coronation. It was a once-in-a-generation event, from the big lunch to the big half out, and of course the big day itself. <laughs> this month, like every month, the PM has been relentlessly focused on delivering your priorities. <laughs> <laughs> Who did the voiceover? Yeah, I was yeah. going to ask that. His heart doesn't sound completely in it, does it? No. no. <laughs> and why did they remove it? Because it was a bit pants, wasn't it? Really? Yeah. <laughs> It didn't have much drip, let's face it. <laughs> yeah. Very good. Thank you. This is Rishi Sunak's trip to America. According to the Sunday Express, it will be the fourth time Biden has met Sunak in as many months. Honestly, Joe, you have. You have met him before. <laughs> <laughs> you have met him. <laughs> this week, the government published Crazy Month, a rap video 
summing up Rishi Sunak's month of May, which they then quickly deleted after it was ridiculed online. <laughs> now, I've had a go at next month's in advance. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Yo, my name is Rishi, I'm the channel hopper stopper, but personally, I like to go everywhere by chopper. Immigrants take note, cos I speak with total candour. If you cross illegally, you'll end up in Rwanda. <laughs> Hang on. I got me Prada shoes and expensive suits, but to prove I'm just like you, check out me boots. <laughs> I'm taking the Tories in a new direction. Oh, and we lost a thousand seats in last month's local elections. Crazy month! <laughs> <laughs> Paul and Jack, here's yours. What's this about? <laughs> oh, well, sorry, that, that doesn't sound quite... I think there's a... a that's, that's got a bit of a block. Sorry, I'll do that, um, do that again. What's <laughs> <laughs> the point? <laughs> Why was that in the news? There was a new story about it going out of fashion. It's not... The kids don't... They don't they're not interested in it anymore. Which is a shame, because in the old days, it was just parents and teachers who hated the damn thing. <laughs> <laughs> You're quite right. This is the news that the recorder is dying out. Was ever worried about it in COVID that it might easily understood how the virus might be transmitted from one to the other if you're putting uh -huh. something in your mouth and blow in? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, basically, they were... <laughs> Let that sink in for a minute. Yeah. Yeah. You're making up... You should be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> And it's sad, you know, it's an instrument that's going to go out of fashion like so many other instruments. Spoons. Very difficult to tune a spoon. Yeah. <laughs> People don't even know what they're there for. They, you know, they <laughs> just eat them yeah. now, not realising... <laughs> yeah. Not realising what magic they hold. Yeah. <laughs> it's like stirring your pudding with a Stradivarius. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's all, what's going on? Wrong. It's wrong. It's wrong. It's all wrong. <laughs> <laughs> What was the original appeal of the recorder? Uh, it must have evolved from one of the basic musical instruments of civilization, you know, the bone flute or something like that. When you say bone flute... Bone flute, yeah. 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 Have you ever... Oh, come on! <laughs> so they're, they're going back to the same joke I'll again. <laughs> Ian, did your children learn the recorder score or was it the harpsichord? <laughs> um, <laughs> I think they both started on the viol de gamba. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, there was a player. Yeah. <laughs> Great centre-half of Real Madrid. What else is new in technology news? Ooh. Oh, not the Apple uh, uh, thing on you, Ed. Yeah. Not to refer to William Tell. <laughs> the um, <laughs> vision thing, reality <laughs> thing. Yeah, Apple have introduced an augmented reality headset called the Apple Vision Pro. Yeah, reality headset. I've got one. I'm wearing it now. <laughs> this is the reality I'm, I'm yeah. experiencing. It's that thing where they say, oh, you put it... It's like you're actually in the room. I get that feeling when I go in a room. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Isn't there something weird about them? Yeah, so basically when you put the goggles on and if mm. you look at the video of yes. the product, you'll see eyes on the front, but those aren't people's actual eyes. They've just digitally captured your eyes and projected them on the front of the goggles. Yeah. So if you die in the goggles and just kind of keel over, people will just think you're alive. Right. <laughs> would you like to see one in action? Yes, please. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I wouldn't, actually. <laughs> <laughs> look away, away now. I'll look away now, OK. <laughs> yeah. This is Vision OS. Apple's first ever spatial operating system. It's familiar, yet groundbreaking. You navigate with your eyes. What rubbish. No, no, I disagree. Yeah. Now I've seen what it can do, yeah. I mean... You can really... see pictures of your own furniture in the room that's got your own furniture in it. It's great, isn't it? Yeah! <laughs> Look at that! Apple have also introduced a modification to its autocorrect function. Do you know about this? Yes. <laughs> it no longer autocorrects the F word to ducking. It's a bit confused, though, but if you have a garden fate and you've got a barrel full of apples in it, you say, come along to our fate where you can be <laughs> fucking apples. <laughs> yeah. Will there be a Granny Smith? <laughs> <laughs> or a pink lady? <laughs> oh, you've been, have you? <laughs> What's the latest artificial intelligence warning? Didn't a number 10 advisor say it would take two years for AI to start killing people? Mm. Can we choose who? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Perhaps it'll be in alphabetical order. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you're right. He said AI could become powerful enough to kill many humans in two years' time. So that's just enough time to pay off the mortgage. <laughs> of course, I haven't really got a mortgage. <laughs> <laughs>
Paid it off with an advert for Direct Line. <laughs> In 2007. Anyway, so um, <laughs> this is the tragic news that the recorder is on its way out. It's not always easy to understand why some musical instruments stop being popular with children. I could never work out where the stylophone fell out of favour. <laughs> <laughs> also this week, Apple have launched a revolutionary new headset at the cost of £2,800. The Times described the headset as allowing you to live in mixed reality. I guess like Holly Willoughby does. <laughs> and so to round two, the fishing rod of news. Oh. Fingers on the buzzers. <laughs> I'm so bemused by the special <laughs> effect, I, <laughs> I forgot to even recognise who that person was in the photograph. Well, that's Prince Harry, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> yes, his... Uh, thank you. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> um, uh, he's in court with the papers about the phone hacking thing. He's yeah. taken on the Daily Mirror, isn't he? The Mirror Group. The problem with this case is just it wasn't very good. I don't think there's any doubt that the tabloids, all of them, were um, up to phone hacking, but he spent eight hours answering questions, many of them which he didn't know the answer to. Um, again, I think he thought it was opera. When you say it was opera, was he expecting somebody to say, where were you <laughs> on the night? <laughs> <laughs> it's opera, isn't it? Yes, yeah, opera. Not opera. opera yeah. <laughs> it's not over till the fat lady interviews. Yeah. <laughs> no, she's not fat. <laughs> no, no, you shouldn't think that. <laughs> she used to be quite big, she's not anymore. Right. I never thought I'd hear myself saying, hey, leave Piers Morgan alone. <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> I just feel like you think, well, he's making a lot out of a little. It seems. This is a court of law and you've got to go in with evidence. And yes. he really didn't have any. Throughout the eight hours, there's this feeling that Harry just thinks if he says it, it's true. Mm. Mm. And that that's just not good enough. Because he's never been gainsaid in his life. No. You get that sense, don't you, that no one has said, actually, sir, that's that's bollocks. You yeah. <laughs> what should he have done with someone telling him that a few times? I mean, if he'd rung me, I'd have told him. <laughs> Have you seen what some newspapers are doing, though? They're getting actors in to talk through his testimony. Have we got any pictures of any? We have. Actor and Prince Harry lookalike Lawrence Dobieth, who starred in Sky News' recreation of the trial. The Telegraph pointed out that he was chosen because he had a beard and red hair. <laughs> Let's have a look at Lawrence. He's, too, he's a bit too neatly trimmed, though, isn't he? Compared to the real Prince Harry, he looks like a dog's tennis ball here. You know. <laughs> <laughs> GB News had their own version of Prince Harry. Watching it, though, I didn't realise just how small Prince Harry is. Sunday Mirror, 13th January 2002. <laughs> Where did Harry not appear? There was a picture taken uh, away from the um, National Portrait Gallery, wasn't there? Well, I'm sure they've put it in storage and just chuck it on a yeah, skip outside. Yeah. <laughs> this is the picture. Looks like an illustration for the Ladybird Book of Family Feuds. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> for me. Yeah, I like how they obviously said, look, we just want to catch you in a sort of casual thing. You know? <laughs> mm. Just wear what you'd normally just wear. Ca yeah. <laughs> well, at least it's a British uniform. <laughs> <laughs> I can see what a double... <laughs> 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 According to the Times, art circles have been questioning the decision specifically because it is seen as being of considerably higher quality than many modern royal portraits. Oh. <laughs> Get out of my pub. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is Prince Harry's court case to stop him being followed by the paparazzi. Much of Harry's evidence is about press coverage of his relationship with Chelsea Davy. To be clear, that's his girlfriend, not his Kings Road drug dealer. <laughs> <laughs> According to Prince Harry, press intrusion caused my breakup with Chelsea Davy. So even he's a bit cheesed off, he's ended up with Meghan. <laughs> <laughs> Time now for the odd one out round. Just one between you this week. Your four are Holly Willoughby, Eric Pickles, Jack D's daughter's dog. <laughs> And Chris Wapples. 
Now, Jack, I'm assuming uh, that is your daughter's dog. <laughs> it is uh, my daughter and her boyfriend's dog. That's right, it is. Right, OK. Yeah. So, uh, do you have any idea why it's there? Um... <laughs> I don't know why she's there. Who was the last guy? Chris Wopples. Chris Wopples. Now, he was on this programme recently, I think. Very it, well done. It Was this about sort of like... Multi, it was something about multi-storey car parks. Car parks are falling down, we had that story. But is it that they're all going to be on this morning? <laughs> it's Holly and Eric, Holly and Chris, Holly and Dog. Yeah. <laughs> it's something to do with telly, yeah. My daughter filmed Nelly watching me on this. Right. That was... I think that's why this has ended up being here. Ah, uh, so, OK. So it could be Nelly likes to watch telly. Nelly she... is a watcher and the others are... She's a viewer and all the others are participants in the medium. That's not correct. <laughs> no. <laughs> They've all been upset about something on telly. Apart from Holly, she went on telly to say she was upset. And the others were upset about We're something upset on telly. Upset about on telly. Ah. This is the fallout from Philip Schofield's departure from ITV. What did Holly say on her return to this morning? Her tone of voice suggested that Phil Schofield and everybody he'd ever known had all been murdered by terrorists. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look. Right. Deep breath. Firstly, are you OK? I hope so. It feels very strange indeed sitting here without Phil. And I imagine that you might have been feeling a lot like I have. Shaken, troubled, let down. Did you feel let down, Ian? I, d I was just wondering if that was a cocktail, shaken, let down. <laughs> <laughs> I think the audience doesn't feel anything except, well, this is quite interesting. <laughs> Unlike the show normally. <laughs> Are you still bitter about being turned down as weather girl? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> you know what my uh, main beef with this one is? that it goes on till half past 12, so... Ah, oh, yeah. <laughs> Still, the show must go on... <laughs> ..for Holly and the This Morning family. Bring it thank in. You. Bye. Thank you. I need a Josie cuddle. Oh. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. All we can do now is be the family that we are. Exactly, you know? exactly. Oh, so... Here's what we've got coming up. <laughs> Many of us enjoyed the sunny weather this weekend, but if you have hay fever, you might feel differently. <laughs> Just the most fantastic segue. <laughs> oh my god, my heart's broken and hay fever. <laughs> what I don't understand is why they keep calling it a family, because it's like the mafia. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Better just to call them the audience, really. Yeah. Well, they are. Oh, yeah. It's confusing. Oh. You've got more respect for that. Yeah, I mean, if me and Ian looked in the camera and said, hello, like what you've done with those curtains. <laughs> <laughs> I tuned in to GB News to see what Eamon Holmes had to say about the situation, but no one told him the cameras were running. On the bitch. <laughs> if only they knew. Uh, if only they knew. Pussycat me. Oh, no, how the fuck did I get home today? Uh... <laughs> change is making turbulence on planes worse. That's according to Paul Williams, who's a professor of atmospheric science. You sure we're on air? We are. It'd be nice if somebody spoke to us. I think our batteries won't Thank change. You. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs> <laughs> when he says, oh, how the fuck do you get home? In the background, you can hear someone going, ah! <laughs> <laughs> Chris Wapples was mentioned on this programme recently by Richard Ayoade. Why was he upset? That's not how you pronounce his name? Is it Chris Wapples? <laughs> <laughs> well, Chris emailed to say he wasn't a lead scientist, but in fact a structural engineer and parking consultant. <laughs> you can't park there. <laughs> it's very modest of him, though. It is very yeah. modest, though. Yeah. yeah. So I'd like to say sorry to Mr Wapples, winner of Best New Car Park 2011, winner of the British Parking Association Lifetime Achievement Award 2015, chairman of the British Parking Association Structures and Asset Management Special Interest Group, but categorically not a lead scientist. <laughs> and what was Mr Pickles upset about? He's meant to regulate ministers taking he jobs. No-one told him about Nadine Dorries having a show on Talk TV. Yeah, well, that's because no one's seen it. <laughs> <laughs> no one told anyone. We talked about Jack D's daughter's dog before, but let's see what was on TV that upset her. Hi, Emma. I've been doing that. I've got news for Boris. 
Simon Jackie as his <laughs> <laughs> So for sending that video in, uh, just make sure she gets it. <laughs> <laughs> they've all been upset by something they've seen on the telly, apart from Holly Willoughby, who made a special statement about how upset she was on the telly. After everyone else had said their piece, it took Holly Willoughby more than a week to make a statement. Not like her to be last in the queue. <laughs> um... <laughs> Time now for the Missing Words Round, which this week features as its guest publication, Buzzword, the magazine of the Bumblebee Conservation Trust. You can get your copy for cash, or if you've got enough of them, nectar points. <coughs> <laughs> and we start with... In summer, bumblebees spend their nights what? Sing Sting's greatest hits. <laughs> <laughs> Massage in a brothel. That was their biggest hit. Um, yeah. <laughs> Massage in a brothel. <laughs> in summer, bumblebees spend their nights cruising hedgerows looking for queens. <laughs> <laughs> They've done the joke yeah. already. Yeah. <laughs> Way ahead of us on all of these. Confusing road sign tells drivers what? Welcome to Britain. <laughs> You're clear for takeoff. <laughs> to walk. To turn left and turn right. You see, when you see that one, one sign, road sign, that always gets me is the one where it says low flying aeroplanes. Like, well, how are you meant to adjust your behaviour? <laughs> <laughs> to sit lower yeah. in the seat or something. Yeah. Um, isn't it turn, do not turn your head? That's it, not to turn their heads. Ah. Here's the sign in full. <laughs> no turning head. <laughs> and the one above it was supposed to be an H for hospital, but the Conservatives haven't built it yet. <laughs> OK, next dog breaks record for world's longest what? Tongue. I saw that story. Yeah, tongue. <laughs> Here is the record breaker. Yes. yes. That's him. Oh. oh. Yeah. That's extraordinary. <laughs> that looks painful. Mm. Yeah, I bet your dog Nelly's paying attention now. Yes, she is. Yeah. <laughs> if you've... <laughs> We've found the level. Yeah. <laughs> that brings us to the end of the show. So who's won? Well, I liked Ian's team, but I also liked Paul's team, but which was better? <laughs> There's only one way to find out, <laughs> by checking the score. <laughs> ah. Ian and Singh, you're on six points. Oh. Paul and Jack, you're on seven. Oh, well seven. done. Well done. <laughs> but before we go, there's just time for the caption competition. New Pope is chosen. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can see you're not Jewish. Yeah. <laughs> On which note, we say thank you to our panellists, Ian Hislop and Zing Singh, Paul Merton and Jack D. And I leave you with news that, as he tries to shake off the Captain Hindsight nickname before the next general election, Keir Starmer immediately regrets letting Twitter users choose his new one. <laughs> As preparations get underway for the Hampton Court Garden Festival, a member of the King's Guard privately wonders if anyone has a spare hay fever tablet. <laughs> and at the Roundtree Factory in York, attendants try to help Jeremy Hunt after a terrible accident with the chocolate dipping machine. <laughs> you did order a flake with that. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> They've had a brainstorm and come up with a new podcast for you to listen to on BBC Sounds Call Jonathan Pye. Be careful who you follow. That's the moral of the day for our Black Ops. They're on the case here on BBC One next.